think. Oh yeah, that looks like it's working now. All right, hi everyone. How's everyone doing? Good, I hope. Hanging in there. All right, very good. Uh, so today we are going to talk about some things. Mariah, oh my God, Chase hears you and doesn't understand where you are. <laughs> he the video like freaking out. Is it? <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> He's like, oh, where is she? <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about like working from home and some tips for working from home because um, a lot of people are working more from home. Are any of you guys working more from home now? I already did it, so no change for me. You already do, yes, right. Got it. Tina, you said your life is pretty much unchanged, which is nice. Who else? I think our other two people definitely are doing more working from home. Um, so just a few things um, about working from home. So we can definitely choose that, we can help our dogs choose to not interrupt us uh, by using some food stuffed toys. Um, so right now, um, I just gave mine this a little topple thing filled with peanut butter. Um, my youngest dog has this has this cute little habit that I don't mind, but it's kind of a it's kind of a thing, right? So if I if I, if I start talking just randomly, um, like talking on the phone, then she will do a little woo woo little party thing, which I think is hysterical. Um, but I didn't really want her to do it today, so that's why she, why I've just given them some some food stuff toys to. So that she didn't do the woo woo today. Um, the other, other types of toys, so we can use like the Kong Genius. The nice thing about this is this is also really easy to clean out. The topple is really my favorite because it's so easy to clean. The dogs do all of the work, and then I can, you know, if I'm starting a new project, then I just stuff that with food, and then they're busy. Um, or this one, like I said, this one is also pretty easy for them to get all of the ingredients. Um, another one, of course, everyone knows the classic. Uh, the, the thing about these is that really they, they do tend to get stuck. Um, lots of food gets stuck under there, like on the, at the bottom. And then we have to soak it in the dishwasher or soak it in the sink to kind of let it all get out. Um, if you want to use like dry treats, like kibble, then this little thing works really well. You just put the treats in there and then this rolls around and then the treats kind of fall out. Another one that you can use is this uh, Starmark one. Um, this one is really big. The nice thing about this is it holds a lot of food. So for a lot of dogs who are super active, then we can like do their entire meal in this. So we just kind of take it and put all of the treats in there. And another nice thing about this is that it has ways that you can make it harder or easier. So like this little whole thing here. You can make it slide out just a tiny bit or you can go all the way to easy. So if you have a dog that's new with starting with toys and they, they're they like, why would I want to work for my food? Um, <laughs> then you can make it easier and as they get to, to really be good at it, then, you know, then they, then we can make it harder, right? But the nice thing about this is that it sits like this and then the dog just kind of hits it around and then here we go scattering more food on the ground. So this is another really nice toy that kind of gives them something to do. And I find that a lot of people that we don't really use, that we could be utilizing these things a lot more. Um, they're pretty easy to do, especially, I think that the, the classic Kong is really challenging. It takes 500 minutes to stuff it. 
but like the 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 West Paw topples that I showed initially, um, those are really easy with stuff. The so it kind of looks like this, and then I just take my peanut butter, go like that, and then we're done, right? And again, the, the dog kind of cleans all of this up. I don't have to do any work to it to kind of get it to go like that. Versus this one, I, I still have to, like it kind of, it works, but it's not really as, as lovely as the other one, right? Um, so that's kind of that. So that's one thing that we can be doing to, to kind of help our dogs while we're kind of bored at home or they're bored at home or, but hopefully we're, so the other thing that we can do is we can do some more walks, right? I mean, gratefully, this doesn't mean that we have to stay completely isolated and not leave the house ever. We can still do more walks and maybe even more walks, which is a really, a nice thing for them. Um, the other thing that I like doing is typically in the morning is, or you can do it any time of the day, is you can take your 10 treats and you can kind of look for 10 behaviors that your dog is doing well. So what if they're just not in your kitchen underfoot? Or what if they're responding well to their name? Or what if uh, they, you know, you say sit and they actually sat, right? Just giving them 10 treats is an easy way to kind of get them get their brain, you know, choosing to do something that we like and then rewarding it. Because that's really, so rewards are really how we build behavior. It's not really, there's no magical cue. Uh, it's not really anything like that. It's just, it's just the reward uh, that teaches the behavior that we want. Um, and then what else, what else did I put together for this beforehand? So other times that are really great to offer a food stuff toy um, when you're doing TV time or office work or eating. Um, I do it a lot when, when the yard people come and are mowing the yard, then I just give my dog something to do. Um, if you're about to get on a conference call. And really, I think this is a great opportunity for lots of people to just transition away from feeding the dogs out of the bowl because uh, we think that feeding them from a bowl is valuable, but dogs don't really think that that's fun. And, and it seems, and I think that a lot of people are kind of realizing now, or at least I am, because um, I like people, I like talking to people, and staying at home and just having the internet uh, is, is quite boring. And so if, if, I was, if I have to do that all month long, then, then I probably would like to work for my food too and have a little bit more mental enrichment. And so I think that that's one way for us to think about, you know, our dogs eating out of a bowl versus eating their meals out of food dispensing toys. Is if if they've had a pretty boring day, then then the last thing that they want is is to consume all of their food in three sections, because um, then then they're just on to the next boring thing. Um, the other so that's really the those are my my fun little tips on working from home. The other thing that I've had a chance to experiment with lately um, is of course doing video conferencing, so video sessions, virtual lessons by, by video. Um, and a few years ago I used to do tons of video sessions for a company. Um, and what I really liked about doing them for the company was that when people would video themselves, and so they watched the video that I made and then they would video themselves doing the homework and then they would send me the video of the homework. And what I found really quickly is that people are, get so good at actually tweaking the things that are important in, without even being told to do so, right? So if we're trying to kind of clean up how we're cueing our sit, for example, and instead of doing sit like 500 different ways and this and that snip and snapping and, and all this other thing, if we just want it to be one signal, right? One signal, then I'm saying my reward marker and feeding. So just sit, doing my hand signal, yes. Grabbing my cookie and then feeding my dog. 
<laughs> then, then if when people kind of see them do this on video themselves, then really easily they they figure out how to kind of modify that to change it so that it looks better, looks that it looks more like what they were supposed to be doing, right? Um, and so, so that's what I experienced a, a few years ago when I was working for that company. Um, and now I'm seeing that a few things that are really helpful for the, for virtual lessons. So first off, we certainly can't do all of our virtual, all every task on virtual lessons, right? So going for an actual walk, not really possible to do with everyone walking around with their phone and everyone getting dizzy and, and that's kind of a challenging thing. But certainly I worked with a, a couple yesterday and they were working on, we were just in their living room, just doing some basic walk next to me, feeding the dog cookies for being next to our side, kind of teaching our skill of, okay, well the dog is, is a little too far past you now, I want you to call the dog back and kind of teaching all of those things, teaching some find it, um, starting on stay, starting on come when called. There's so many things that we can do online uh, through virtual lessons. And, and again, I'm seeing some really positive results. So a big thing is, is that we tend to do a little less talking, a little less just casual chatter. So we are getting in more things. Um, uh, uh, the other big thing is that I'm, because I'm not driving, I have half an hour extra, maybe even 45 minutes extra that we can prepare ahead of time where I can kind of ask people what they want to work on, put together some videos, put together some slides. Um, so that, that way I'm kind of sending the information um, through multiple pieces of media. And then the other thing, so we're, so they're, you're getting more as far as we're covering more information. And then the other huge thing is, is that at the end of the lesson, again, because I have time, I'm able to kind of send a Google document with these are the things we went over. And, and then you kind of have all of your homework right there. And then people are also sending me follow-up videos on this is what we did. And then I'm able to kind of give even more feedback. So do you guys have any questions about doing like, any questions about what we've talked about so far? I love questions. <laughs> I think I'd like to do some videos with you, video conferencing or whatever you call it. I think that would be awesome. Um, especially with what, with what we've done or what we need to do work on next. Um, because really then your husband is in, we're not, I'm not, not having to be in contact with John. And then also we typically train just from the dining room anyway, <laughs> on our cooperative care stuff. And so I think that would be great. Okay. Be I think, do you think it would be fun? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Very cool. So Katie so will, doesn't hear you because she's outside. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, she'd have come a running too. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, so maybe we'll switch our, we, I think we have a lesson on Tuesday. Maybe we'll switch that to a virtual lesson. All right, cool. Anyone else want to add? Maria, if you want to jump in and add something? Um, no, I'd be willing to try some virtual lessons too. Um, I mean, who knows how long this is going to go, so. <laughs> right? I mean, it seemed like it was just, you know, going to be two weeks, and now it's going to be the whole month, and, you know, yeah. The other thing that I, I've been thinking about, and I'm not really ready yet, but, you know, certainly I think it would be a ton of fun um, to do, like, small group classes. So doing, like, a, a four-person group class on maybe just fun tricks to work on. Or, or I could certainly do one on, you know, puppy skills and loose leash walking, that sort of thing, or reactive dogs. Um, you know, that would be a really easy thing to do. Um, you know, I, I'll be the first one to say that I'm 
I'm typically not a huge fan of group classes because I find that typically dogs need quite a bit of training um, to actually ignore the other dogs before a group class is helpful. But I think doing it on video is really it, like the best of both worlds, right? Like I get to present the information. I get to see you guys actually practicing things. It's affordable. It's, re it's way more affordable than doing like, you know, plus I'm not having to rent a building. We don't have to worry about rain cancellations. It seems like, and right now seems like a great time to kind of try that. I know my boys would love to do some like learning tricks because sit and down and you know the simple things are they're great but the kids want to learn you know some more fun tricks to do with the dog so right yeah absolutely absolutely have they have you do they know does your dog know spin and twirl or anything like that no. mm -mm. okay well here i'll show you that one that's pretty easy I have some dogs ready to demo. <laughs> All right, let's see. Can you see me now? Yep. Okay. So all you do is you take a cookie and you have them follow it so that they follow, <laughs> so that they follow it in a little circle. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's a little easier when you're only working one dog. <laughs> 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 two, and then I'm like, and then I just tend to kind of do it to the outside. But it's a okay. fun little thing. Um, good try. All right, cool. Any other comments, questions, concerns? What else are you guys experiencing? Or, you know, spending more time from home? Is it affecting your dog negatively? Anything? Mm. my dog paws a lot at us like if we're not paying attention to her she'll just come up and start pawing at us all the time um, okay so maybe but, more more work for work for her meals would kind of yeah. help yeah all right awesome all right well that's all i have for today do we have any other questions any other comments might be fun sometime if you're at a dog park, <laughs> if they've got bandwidth. Um, there's a little, uh, there's an apartment that comes up with a small dog park that's never used. And um, Herman doesn't really see the purpose of it. But they have um, little tunnels and um, little uh, trying, you know, things to go over. They, they put, got some nice equipment to dogs in there. I'm having a hard time hearing you, Steve. But I think that what you said is that there's a dog park near your house and kind of taking the dogs in there by themselves and playing in the tunnel and that sort of thing. Would that be a good thing to do? Is that what you said? Well, they find it boring. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so they find going to that location boring. Um, they don't really do much. Okay. So you could do like chicken feed feeding. Uh, where you kind of go there and you have some kibble um, and you're kind of scattering some food like chicken feed so that they're sniffing around and actually eating. Um, I have plenty of friends that have many dogs and they, that's kind of one of their weekly feeding methods um, is just to go out in the backyard and spread the food all, out all over the place. And, and it's amazing that, you know, you would think that all the dogs would bite, but um, because there's so much food and it's spread out so much that the dogs tend to do really great with it. Okay. Does that answer your question? Thank you. One thing I think that we're going to have to work on is some of the times when we're working doing some daily crating because he's, he, he's, he's freaking out with you on the camera. Um, he, he's been <laughs> listening and like watching, but, um, we need to start getting him back in his crate some during the day because I'm afraid that he's completely regressing to where he doesn't like the crate because we're around letting him out all the time. Yeah, and he's already kind of the, on the edge of separation issues. Um, so yes, I, I would definitely be incorporating that into your regular routine so that he's kind of seeing the crate and, and good things and still kind of acclimating to that.
Anything else? Oh, and I, I wore a non-dog shirt or a non-dog training shirt today. That <laughs> says dog lover walking the thin line of crazy. <laughs> That's just a good time. And this room I never ever use, and, and now I'm finding that this is a great use for it. I have a Chase small. on my shirt. You have Chase on your shirt? Yes. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's super cute. I have some Border Collie shirts too. All right, awesome. Well, hopefully I'll see you guys on the, the next video call, but this was a lot of fun. Um, hopefully you guys had fun and definitely let me know if you want to do some some virtual lessons or some virtual group lessons or anything like that. Um, yeah, because it'll be fun. Well, thank you. All right. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Bye. Bye.